we're going to follow the same procedure firstly by identifying MCB financial groups net income and then its earnings per share and following that we will calculate its PE ratio or rather its trailing PE ratio again I'm using the company's annual report and to find these documents you can simply search Google for the company and then put annual report and the year that you are interested in we can see here from the table of content that the company's financial statements begin on page 123 now this document is 346 pages long by the way this is the honorable michael lee chin he is the chairman of the ncb financial group so here we are at page 139 and we are seeing the consolidated income statement for the NCB financial group for the year ended September 30th, 2019. We're going to scroll down to find the net income as well as the earnings per share. From this line, we can see that NCB financial group's net profit or their net income was 30 billion 692 million and 25,000. The earnings per share was recorded as $12.18 and that's an increase from $11.39 from 2018. We're also given a note here in note 16 and this note will actually tell us how they calculated the earnings per share. The earnings per stock unit is the same as the earnings per share and as you can see here NCB Financial Group recorded an EPS of $12.18 Jamaican for the 2019 financial year. Note 16 will actually give us more details as to how it is that they calculated this number. And I'm going to verify that. So I'm going to capture the net income or the net profit so it was 30 billion six hundred and ninety two million twenty five thousand next i'm going to scroll to note 16 in order to see the number of shares that were used in calculating the company's earnings per share okay so here we are at note 16 calculation of the earnings per stock unit and NCB actually provides a very detailed description of how they calculated their EPS. The note basically tells us that the basic earnings per stock unit was calculated by taking the net profit attributable to stockholders and then dividing that by the weighted average number of stocks in issue during the, that year, which is basically saying that they took the net income and divided it by the total number of shares in issue for the period under review. This note is also important. They're saying that the diluted earnings per stock unit equals the basic earnings per stock unit as there are no potential dilutive ordinary stock units. What they're basically saying is that they do not have any convertible debt or options available at this time. So those things would weigh on the total number of shares in issue. Here it is shown that their earnings per share were calculated using a value of $29,576,423,000 and a weighted average number of ordinary stock units of 2 billion four hundred and twenty nine million one hundred and eighty thousand since we had captured the net income from the line above I'm going to use that number and then I'm going to divide it through by the 2.4 billion shares that are in issue and to see if we get a similar number so I'm going to be dividing that by 2,429,180,000. And the number we get is slightly higher for the earnings per share 
of $12.63. Now to calculate NCB Financial Group's PE ratio. So what we're going to do is we're going to take NCB Financial Group's current stock price and divide it through by the $12.63. To get NCB's latest stock price, we're going to have to go to the Jamaica Stock Exchange and then we're just going to search for NCB. Here we can see that NCB last traded at $150, but the close price was $143.26. We will use the close price to calculate the PE ratio. So we're going to divide $143.26 by $12.63. That gives us a P.E. ratio of 11.34 times earnings. And again, we will talk about what this P.E. ratio is actually telling us in the next section. So again, to calculate NCB Financial Group's P.E. ratio, we took the last close price and divided it through by the earnings per share value that we calculated. We could have also just used the stated earnings per share. So if we were supposed to take the close price and divide it through by the stated earnings per share, we get a slightly higher P.E. ratio of 11.76. The trailing P.E. ratio is a historic value. It is calculated using the company's earnings over the last 12 months. Whereas the forward P.E. ratio is calculated using the company's estimate for the total current year's earning. The forward P.E. ratio can also be calculated using analyst expectations for earnings for the current year for a particular company. In other words, a forward P.E. ratio can be calculated using what analysts expect the company to earn in terms of net income for the current financial year. In the example that was just shown, we calculated the trailing P.E. ratio. To calculate the forward P.E. ratio, one would have to make an estimate of what the current financial year's earnings for Apple or NCB Financial Group would be and then to divide the current share price by that number for the EPS. This is not as easy as it might sound as there are a lot of factors that an analyst will need to consider when making estimates for current earnings for a particular company. These factors vary greatly and can be impacted by such things as taxes or tax breaks or tax penalties, expansion, acquisitions, litigation, and the list goes on. What's more, all of these factors could affect the company's earnings in either a positive or a negative way. An acquisition doesn't necessarily mean that a company will be in a better position going forward. An expansion doesn't always lead to a company reporting better earnings in the current financial year. I'd have to do a separate video taking you through the exercise of estimating a company's earnings. So if you guys would like to see that video, be sure to click the like button and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Analysts will often choose to report either a trailing or the forward PE ratio, but there are services out there that will actually report both. Now that we understand what the PE ratio is and how we can calculate it, let's talk about why the PE ratio is so important to investors.
All right, we're at the end of this video. Feel free to share it with somebody whom you think might benefit from this presentation. And if you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll be sure to get back to you. Thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more educational content on investing, personal finance, and financial literacy. My name is Devroid Davis, wishing you all the best.